So Hurricane Katrina was uh, something that obviously I never hope to see again, but I'm sure we will. We never expected that it was coming to us the day before. We had all been told that it was going a completely different direction, so we weren't really even concerned about it. I grabbed my infant daughter, who was only, I believe, three weeks at the time, my wife and our two dogs, crammed it into our little Explorer sport track that we had and took off. We stayed with my aunt at the time in a house just off of Hardy Street in Hattiesburg. Well, just as luck would have it, that was where all of the tornadoes from the storm impacted. So the devastation, you know, the next morning when we went back out to look was worse than we ever imagined and we're still 60, 70 miles north. My youngest daughter almost didn't make it. Um, it was so hot at that time and you know, a two, three week old baby, it doesn't take much. As a matter of fact, we were sitting in line to get gas and the lines were 10 miles long. You could sit there for two or three days just to get gas so the engine couldn't run. So we were maybe 20 yards from our turn at getting gas. And I looked over at her and she was turning colors, like turning red, beet red. So I snatched her up out of the car seat and ran into the gas station to put her in the sink to cool her down. And about that time, another woman came in hysterical. Her baby, the same age, had just died. It was, it was a tough time. Now we realized we have an infant daughter and we have no power, no water. We're very close to running out of formula. So we did the only thing we could and we got in the truck and went into town. And we met up with this officer. We told him our situation and you know, at that time a lot of people were looting different places. We had a need, so the officer helped us thank God, and actually got us the formula from the store that we needed to feed our daughter that kept her alive. It was difficult, still thinking back on it to this day. You know, I like to think that that officer that helped me had a, a big influence on my future for sure, which led me to join into law enforcement in the first place. I made the decision, um, went to what we call Wynn Job Center, um, which is a government institution that helps people find jobs. And they had a government grant that would allow me to go to the police academy without having a law enforcement agency sponsor me. So I went that route, which made me a self-sponsor. Um, and I pretty much pushed myself through the academy the whole way through and um, graduated top of my class and then was picked up by a local sheriff's department in Mississippi. And I worked with them for roughly 10 years. Um, loved it, it was tough. You know, that job's tough. A lot of people don't realize it. You know, there's things that people in that business see that the average person never will. They'll never experience. I had an incident where I was in an altercation with a suspect who approached me from my blind side. And during the course of the struggle, I was shot point blank in the chest. Um, thank God I had my vest on, which had stopped most of it, but not all of it. And I was life flighted from there to University of Alabama. Uh, they were the closest trauma center equipped to handle something like that. And, um, I'll never forget, I remember my daughter telling me that she wanted me to see her graduate from high school. So I made the decision that I wasn't gonna do law enforcement anymore. I didn't handle it as well as I should have. You know, I'll take a little bit of fault for that for sure. I lost a lot because of that. I was, in, I was depressed, I was in a big funk, and I lost everything. I lost my wife, I lost my house, I lost my car, I lost everything that I'd worked for for 20 years.
years at that point. But instead of staying in that mindset, I decided that it would be a chance at a second life. I'd always been curious about truck driving. The getting to travel around the country and you know being paid to do it, you know, that was definitely what intrigued me about it. From the day I called Night Transportation, I had this overwhelming sense of acceptance. You know, no matter what, they were gonna help me out if they could. Keep in mind at this point, I've lost everything. I have nothing left. The only thing I have, you know, are the clothes on my back and I'm living with my parents and single and haven't seen my kids in, you know, weeks. So I go in the night, I get started, they put me in a truck, I start driving, and within a year, I've rebuilt everything that I lost within one year. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. They gave me my life back. 